Professor Manuel, Manuel, can you please tell us about nosebleeds and complications of sinus surgery? Sure. Uh, well, nosebleeds is a pretty frequent uh, uh, problem in the emergency units. Uh, uh, most people come with minor bleedings which uh, arise from the anterior third of the nose because of uh, uh, ex uh, exication and dryness or because of a flu. And uh, usually in around 90% of these cases, they, uh, that can be coped with by pressing on the uh, external part of the nose for five minutes. That is almost the coagulation time, which then stops the bleeding. But I'd like to talk about the other 10% of nosebleeds who are severe epistaxis cases. And epistaxis is the medical term for uh, severe nosebleeds as well. And uh, Usually these uh, arise in around 90% from a, a bigger artery which is at the posterior aspect of the nose and in around 10% from another artery which comes down along the nasal septum superiorly. Uh, what has been performed until now and is still performed uh, along the world is a packing of the nose. That means introducing something into the nose, trying to block the loss of blood through that uh, open artery. Uh, what we have been proposing recently, in the last decade I would say or more, is to approach the nose uh, and the general anesthesia, look for the bleeding source, mainly the sphenopalatine artery which is located posteriorly address that endoscopically and clip or coagulate that in order to stop the bleeding immediately the same applies for the small branch of the anterior ethmoidal artery which comes down along the septum the mucosal area of the septum which also can be coagulated B or monopolar um, the advantages of doing a uh, uh, endoscopic approach of that artery is that you don't need to pack that anymore. Uh, <coughs> in a previous uh, treatment with a large packing, sometimes even with a balloon inside the nose to block that bleeding, uh, patients had a blocked nose for three or four days. And nowadays you do the coagulation in that area and you can wake up the patient without any packing and dismiss them, send them home the next day. That is a big advantage for uh, uh, elderly patients because usually those patients who have severe nosebleeds are 60 or above. And they have a series of other uh, changes in their body like heart uh, arrhythmias or uh, like high arterial hypertension and so on. So having the nose packed on both sides usually it's a, is a ma major issue because they have to breathe through the mouth. That means the mouth is dry, they have uh, 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 apnea syndromes and, and, and it get, can get more complicated with the packing in the nose. So what we uh, actually are doing is we block the nose with a balloon and an anterior packing, wait for a uh, slot, time slot in the operating theater, bring the patient in, coagulate the bleeding vessel and then wake up the patient without any packing and if he doesn't bleed the next 24 hours he is dismissed home. Thank you. Uh, complications uh, during or after endoscopic sinus surgery is uh, uh, fortunately unfrequent, but you still have to count uh, with around 1% of severe complications uh, during or after surgery. Uh, and the reason is that uh, that type of surgery is performed uh, between the nose septum and the orbit and between the nose and the skull base. So therefore you may run into uh, complications when entering the orbit uh, with uh, a double vision, with bleeding into the orbit, uh, with uh, even blindness in that area, although these cases are very rare. Uh, and then uh, particularly with lesions along the skull base, which uh, may end up opening the endocranium with cerebrospinal fluid leakage, which need to be repaired repaired immediately because of the risk of ascending bacterial meningitis. The nose is not sterile as compared to the
the middle ear, which is considered sterile. There are no bacteria in the middle ear, but the nose is full of bacteria, so they would start to grow and produce meningitis. So these are situations where you really have to deal with. Of course, bleeding during surgery or after surgery will bring us back to the situation I mentioned before with nosebleeds. You would need to go back to try to find the bleeding vessel and to coagulate it because that is the safest and shortest way to reduce the bleeding. Uh, when doing that surgery, you would say that se serious complications happen in around 1% of the cases in a training center. A training center is a hospital, a unit with, with residents who, although being uh, supervised during surgery, may run into a complication. But that is not all. Usually residents or people who start the surgery do not perform a full surgery along the skull base. It is more the experts who do then the extended approaches and doing extended approaches has a higher risk of a complication. So in fact the higher complication rate although published in training centers of being 1% is rather because of experts doing more extensive and extended surgery than because of the residents. Thank you so much for You're your welcome. time.